Anyone up for some Monday morning quarterbacking? How about that? Good morning to you. Good Monday, actual morning. Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates in the same place that you found this. Maybe we should begin every week by just going over the latest stuff, whether it's real or imagined or sourced or invented, about the quarterbacks. I won't promise that right now, but it at least seems like a fun concept worth pursuing. And I'll begin by sharing with you the latest information that I've picked up on, and it goes a little like this. And in parentheses here, pardon me if some of this is a repeat, but, you know, context is critical too, right? My information remains, for example, that the Steelers are prepared to make Mason Rudolph an offer, one that they believe, from their point of view, will be a significant one and quite possibly enough to get the deal done. Now, of course, they're not in a position to assume that, and neither are you or I, because ultimately, you know, Mason can just say, Nah, no thanks. I'm going to see what the other 31 teams have to say first. He can do that. And I don't think anybody could or would blame him for it. But he also could accept it. And he could accept it before he goes into free agency and he could stay with some offensive players with whom he's built a genuine bond. My further information is that Art Rooney is behind this concept. I don't say behind as in he created it. I mean, he's behind it as in he supports it. He was honestly impressed with what Mason was able to do with mostly the same players that other quarterbacks have had and couldn't do much of anything with. Next bit of information, the Steelers are not, repeat, not going to go to the outside for a major quarterback acquisition. People can throw all the names, the Justin Fields, the Kirk Cousins and so forth, Russell Wilson. They can do that, and there's going to be people who fall for it and click on whatever it is that they're selling. But the team has no intention of doing that, which, by the way, should also tell you how serious they are about keeping Mason. Because you're not going to go into a season with just Kenny Pickett after the owner, the chairman of the board, said, and this was public, that he really liked the way the team responded in the final four games when they got good quarterback play. Ow! And that was him, not me. And it was on the record. Not, you know, whispered to someone in a back room. Everything that I'm saying here holds true, and there's no change to it in sight, barring Mason leaving for another team, which obviously would cause the Steelers themselves to change their outlook, including on shopping for outside quarterback help. So what does this mean? Well, it goes a little bit like this. There's going to be a competition at training camp in the preseason, however it is that you'd want to describe the scenario or what would be valued most by whoever it is that decides the winner of the competition, which in theory should be Mike Tomlin. But Tomlin does have one person in the organization to whom he answers directly, and that would be Rooney. Now, would it look awfully unsightly if the owner chooses the winner of the quarterback competition? Yeah, of course, it'd be absurd. But what the owner can, and in my opinion, not only should, but must, ensure is that going into camp, it's going to be a real and honest competition, not some staged dog and pony show in which Mitch Trubisky emerges as the winner, even though no one thought Mitch was better than anybody else. The position is too important. The stakes are too high for the owner to not be involved, especially if he feels, as a lot of us do, 
that the head coach has himself a bit of a pet in Pickett. And I don't have to tell anyone listening to this program that this head coach has a history, an obvious and glaring history, of picking out favorites, of finding the guys that he thinks have that special it, and he will stick by them, and he will fight for them, and he will throw them out there again and again and again and again until they make it completely impossible for him to continue playing them. Or, I should add, in the positive cases, until they perform at the level that he expected all along and he looks really smart, which also happens. But when it comes to quarterback, my goodness, one would seriously hope that he's lost that license. Now, where I'm skeptical of this from the broadest possible view is I still don't know how you have a competition that's determined by training camp ball and preseason ball when you just saw this team go through a training camp and preseason in which Kenny looked like the next Fran Tarkenton, only to be eaten alive when the games got real because in those games that aren't real, you're not facing the issues that ended up confronting him, meaning the pass rush, confounding him, meaning the pass coverage. How do you simulate that in August or September? Well, you don't. How do you recreate the conditions through which Mason just did really, really well, including being on the road, having all that pressure, the weather? You don't. So there it is, Monday morning quarterback update. Next Monday, I might just replay this whole segment when we come back, J1Q. Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George. LGKG is a personal injury law firm in Western Pennsylvania that represents people hurt in car accidents or who need help with workers' comp or medical malpractice. When the attorneys at LGKG make you a promise, they keep it. They've been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. LGKG's been AV rated, the highest rating a law firm can receive, and they've been designated super lawyers. That's actually a thing for over 15 years. It's a rare combination. LGKG has offices in Cranberry, Newcastle, Beaver Falls, Butler, and Elwood City. Learn more about them by visiting lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. LGKG. Today's J1Q comes from Michael, who asks, Hey, DK, what would it mean for the city to host an NFL draft? How much revenue does that bring in? And what are some additional benefits besides it being really cool? And I have to begin by telling you that I just love this question because it allows me an opportunity to clear up a lot of goofy, outdated misconceptions about our city. The first is that we can't handle major events. That's been disproven, I can't tell you how many times, most recently, and if you're going to laugh this off, you're going to be making a mistake with the two Taylor Swift concerts this past summer. Those are massive events. They brought in people from literally across this half of the continent. They filled up our hotel rooms. They brought in way more people than what will show up for a draft. Because she sold Akershire Stadium out for two nights, and even with whatever overlap happens to be able to afford seeing both shows, you're still talking about 100,000 people coming in. The NFL draft isn't that. The NFL draft doesn't even bring in the number of athletes and agents and so forth. You might not believe this either, but it's true that the NHL draft does. Why? Because almost all of the prospects taken in the NHL draft show up for the event. And all 32 teams conduct all of their business on location at tables on an arena floor right in front of everybody. With the NFL, all of the individual teams, including your Steelers, do their business from their home headquarters. The Steelers draft war room is on the south side. And the draft prospects, as you see year after year after year, are just a handful of guys 
who go sit in that green room. Most of them don't like it because they feel like if they're going to sit there too long, they're going to end up getting embarrassed nationally as they just sit there and sit there and sit there and wonder why nobody's picking them. So the teams don't come. The prospects don't come. Who shows up? Well, it's just enough people to populate that stage area. So, yeah, to put it in your words, it's more of a fun thing than it is some massive moneymaker. And there's one other thing to factor into this. Most of our hotels in the entire western Pennsylvania region, the dominant portion of our hotels are right in downtown and the immediate surroundings. A couple on the North Shore, one on the South Side. But they're mostly right here in the mile and a quarter golden triangle from the Point Fountain to Grant Street. And those hotels in 2023 operated at 83% occupancy, which is very, very healthy. So whatever you're adding on to that, it's welcome. They won't turn it down. They'll be able to jack some rates up. But it's not some massive impact. I'll bet, actually, that if you get into a study, and I'm sure they're going to do this at the time, as to what impact it'll actually have, a lot of that will depend on how the broadcasts portray us, meaning do they still put up these ridiculous and, honestly, at this point, insulting images of steel mills. We don't have a single steel mill in city limits, not one. And all we've done... Since the steel mills closed is to become a better, healthier, cleaner, more beautiful place to live. That's the kind of stuff where we'd benefit if they showed that. If they talk about what modern Pittsburgh is and not what everybody's 1970s permanently stuck in time vision of Pittsburgh happens to be. That'll be wonderful and that'll contribute even more to what's one of our biggest industries in Pittsburgh, and that's tourism, because people who see our city really fall in love, not with the 1970s image, but with the actual current for real Pittsburgh. Hope that began to answer your question. I'm just thrilled to take this topic, as you can tell. I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow that won't be about quarterbacks. 